Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. Racing, music, camping, it all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year.
Good evening, race fans. Welcome here to Worldwide Technology Raceway for the Arches of Victory 156, the season finale of the PitPassNetwork.com ARCA series. My name is Robert Hill Jr. Joining me up here in the booth for the final time here tonight is William White. Will, how are you doing tonight, my friend? Well, it's mixed emotions. It's going to be our last broadcast of the Pit Pass Network Arca Series together, but I'm excited. We're going to crown our champion tonight. Yeah, definitely going to be uh, an interesting night. Let's just go with that. It'll be fun nonetheless, and I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what these guys can do. Obviously, coming into tonight, Justin Wadsworth is the clear favorite to pick up the championship. As we take a quick look at the points, of course, he does have a 24-point lead ahead of Michael Hosick entering tonight's race. Jeff Green up there as well, seven points back of Michael. Uh, two points back of Jeff Green is a late Norgard. Then we have Gavin Higgins up there, Corey Abbott. Frank got suspended. He's not going to be here tonight. Tyler Skordinsky in eighth. Carlos Acosta, Jay Connor, Dylan Havir, and Jess Story round out those playoff drivers that entered the uh, five-round playoffs that we started not too long ago here. Well, and let's take a look at the race format for tonight, the way that we're going to cap off the season and cap off uh, this chapter of the Pit Pass Network ARCA series. 125 laps, no stages. And you know what? Just because we're leaving, I gave them an extra set of tires. Five sets here tonight for the drivers, so they can come down and take a set every 25 laps. As qualifying, just about to wrap up here. Looks like uh, just a few moments to go. Currently, Jeff Green on the pole ahead of championship favorite Justin Wadsworth. The late Norgar, Jay Connor, and Michael Hosick up there. I believe Corey Abbott, the last of the cars on the racetrack, currently putting down a time. As you see the Abbott Motorsports 21 machine right there. Coming around and qualifying is going to wrap up. Will, let's take a look at the starting grid here tonight. And it is, of course, Jeff Green going to roll off from the pole. He's going to have Justin Wadsworth alongside him in row number one. Row two, a late Norgard and Jay Connor. Row three, Michael Hostick and Hunter Smith with Jaden Racimus. <laughs> I got to update that. But Caleb Pecumer in position number eight with Corey Abbott and Dylan Havir rounding out the top ten. Why don't you take us through the rest of the field? Row number six is going to have Carl Sacosta in the O2 and the 2-0 of Gavin Higgins there in P12 will round out row number six. P13 will be the number 16 of Connor Thompson. He'll have the 85 of Carl Sims alongside him. Richard Hines and David Carpenter round out row eight is the 22. Talladega winner Andrew Harcastle in 17th for Raymond Hanneman. Daytona winner in the truck series for so a couple of Plate track specialist in row number nine, rounding out the top 20, is Mark Rabanis and Mitch Havir. Dustin Haynes and Tyler Skordensky rounding out everyone who set a lap time in 21st and 22nd with Josh Osborne in P23. That is your 23 car field here tonight. Shout out to the folks at Worldwide Technology Raceway, a great premier partner here of the Elite Racing League. You heard from them just before the start of this one, and you will hear from them again later on when we do get to our ad breaks at some point. Those are for you, Ryan Gable, if you're tuned in know how much you love commercials but uh fred the pace car driver sitting there stationary getting ready to go barney the flag man has that green flag in hand not gonna need it for a couple more seconds here will it's not quite time barney so calm down get that flag ready and we'll get set to go green here shortly the entire field has now hit the grid as we should be pulling away momentarily there they go set them free this is the field for tonight's Arches of Victory 156. Of course, that is uh, a bit of a tribute to the Gateway Arch here in St. Louis, Missouri. The racetrack in Madison, Illinois, so not too far away. So the field works their way around the 1.25 mile circuit. Going to get set to unleash for 125 laps here tonight. William White, why don't we go ahead and do this for the final time here tonight? Who is your pick to get it done? 
think I'm going to go off the driver who was actually fastest in the practice sessions and qualified very strongly in P3. I'm going to go for the 12 of Leighton Norgard to reign the waste tonight. Great pick there. I'm going to go with somebody that I've genuinely believed in from the start of this series. Somebody that this series was built for to develop, become a competitive driver each and every week. And he's done just that. I'm going to go with the 24, Michael Hasek. Tonight, he's going to get it done. I, I just have that feeling. He's been close multiple times. He's going to do it here tonight. But the pace car's off. And for the final time, William White, let's go. Green flag racing here at the Worldwide Technology Raceway is Jeff Green. Justin Wadsworth going to lead us to the green flag. And we are underway. Leighton Norgard there got off to a good start. He's already passed the six there. Justin Wadsworth looks inside of Jeff Green, but to no avail. Wadsworth going to hang it around the outside of the 12 of a Leighton Norgard. But it's Jeff Green clear into the lead. It's Justin Wadsworth almost clear for second place in front of a Leighton Norgard. We'll see if Norgard elects to just tuck in for the time being. He does look to the inside of Justin Wadsworth with a little bit of a send there, but he's going to Almost find tucked himself place. into the rear end of that six car is what it looked like to me, but uh, everyone is going to be A-OK -okay. as Jeff Green going to lead the opening lap. Now carries us through to lap number two. The top five has not changed too much. Michael Hossix lost a spot. Hunter Smith has worked his way up into the top five. Is Caleb Pecumer going to be side by side with Jaden Racimus? Well, this driver of the number 19 is another one that, uh, you know, I raced with in the trucks before the ARCA series started. And the gains I've seen out of him in this series is absolutely phenomenal as well. Jaden Racimus in the 19 working his way up to position number seven, battling side by side with the PQ Cumber, Caleb Pecumer, who currently resides in that eighth spot. Dylan Havir just behind us. You see some side by side. Gavin Higgins and Corey Adams. Abbott as it looks like Higgins going to be the one to get the spot ahead of Abbott as Jeff Green continues to lead by about a tenth and a half over Justin Wadsworth as they head for turn number three. Yeah, both these front two, Jeff Green and Justin Wadsworth, have shown good pace and in these early stages of this race, but letting Norgard not letting them have it easy. We're seeing a bit of a three-car breakaway, about four tenths back to the line of Jay Connor, Hunter Smith there in the 54 running up the top five. You see Justin Wadsworth there having a little peek to the inside of Jeff Green into turn number one, but no dice for this championship leader as of current. That's going to allow Leighton Norgard to close in just a smidge, but I imagine those three are going to bind their times and wait to make their respective moves until a little later in the race. See Leighton Norgard again, just maybe trying to sank the six out a bit as he gets right up close to the rear bumper going into turn three. Norgar doing whatever he can to try to get up there, try to battle a little bit with the Justin Wadsworth machine as we ride on the roof cam here of the number 12 of a late Norgard, the Abbott Motorsports driver. Tanks.gg on the side of this machine, looking to have a GG moment of himself here tonight and maybe claim a victory to end the season in the Pit Bass Network Arca Series. Shout out to pitbassnetwork.com, your home for all things motorsports, from news to reviews and interviews for their support of the series right from the start uh, now wrapping up season number three so really proud of what we've been able to accomplish as a partnership between ppn and elite as you do see a late norgard diving down to the inside of justin wadsworth here wadsworth continuing to hold that outside lane rather steadily as he gets a little loose there looks like uh, he nearly knocked down the outside wall in that number six car as norgard continues to pressure him from behind jay connor a driver that's won a couple races in the series looking to close that gap currently residing in position number four and trying to hold off Hunter Smith, the driver of the number 54, Warriors for Peace uh, Chevrolet for Little Eagle Racing. Of course, teammates with Ryan Schull, Chad Frankenfield and company as we ride on board with Hunter Smith currently residing in position number five. Yeah, looking incredibly smooth there is the 54 of Hunter Smith. Seeing this top five, now top six kind of come together a little bit they kind of converged on each other at the tail of that pack is the six in the sixth place machine michael harsak their second in the championship 24 points back from justin wadsworth means that he mathematically is just about to able to win the title if wadsworth pretty much dnfs with no bonus points and michael harsak leads every lap 
Well, the most laps from now on in does take Oh, Wadsworth into the outside wall, wall. For Haas, but we did see Justin Wadsworth there, a little mistake. He's going to lose six, some spots as well. For a late Norgard. Might lose a couple spots here. Late Norgard's already passed him. Jay Connor's on his inside now. Losing some spots is Justin Wadsworth. Got the outside wall again right there. Maybe the pressure getting to this driver early on. Of course, he does have a rather large buffer coming into this one, William. So doesn't necessarily have to worry about it, but still has to find his way to the end of this particular race to make sure he scores enough points to keep himself alive. Let's look at a battle a little bit further back as Connor and Wadsworth going to go side by side for third. Actually, we'll keep our eyes on this one for just a moment and see how this winds up as the other battle I was referencing dissipated rather quickly with Andrew Hardcastle getting position number 15 over Kyle Simmons. Looks like a late Norgard might be closing the gap a little bit to Jeff Green up towards the front as well. We'll take a look at that momentarily as Connor continues to be on the inside of the Justin Wadsworth machine. Let's jump high above and uh, thank you to Dave Huckleberry for flying our chopper here tonight and thanks for everything that he has done for this series as well from providing us with great graphics uh, to the point standing updates the driver overrides everything that we need to make a uh, cohesive broadcast a lot of that goes back to Dave Huckleberry so thank you to him as we see a late Norgard closing the gap here on Jeff Green the battle for the race lead about two and a half tenths right now so this one not quite boiling over as of yet but this one absolutely filling the stovetop with all of that uh, soupy water as Wadsworth and Connor continue to battle side by side yeah, Wadsworth and Connor have been side by side, neck and neck for about the last five laps now. Wadsworth just hanging on with the momentum on the outside, <laughs> but Jay Connor really sending it deep into the corners. Only now does Justin Wadsworth clear back for third place. Jay Connor a little bit passive there on the entry. That's allowed Hunter Smith to get to his outside there in the 54, but Connor clears Hunter off of turn number two there. We'll see if Hunter looks for a move into turn three. He likes to hang back for the time being, so it's Wadsworth, Connor, Smith, and now Hossack joining the fray that's third through sixth as the championship leader is in still a prime position to take his first title in elite well i just got an update from dave huckleberry he is not flying the chopper here tonight he is actually flying the elite racing league zeppelin that we'll take a look at uh, now currently high above the racetrack taking a look at the battle for the lead between jeffrey green and alan on leighton norgard as he battles in position number two that gap is closing quickly amongst these drivers that's pit lane i don't know why we're looking at that but we'll use it later on down the line here tonight, Will. <laughs> yeah, Norgard over these last few laps is just eat, he's just eating into that gap by a couple hundredths a lap. His tyre seems to be in just slightly better nick than that of race leader Jeff Green as Norgard starts to pile on the pressure. You see him about half the lane the whole car with a low Jeff Green there through turns one and two. Maybe just allowing him to save that right front tyre as he moves now to the inside. He gets the draft coming off the turn two. So side by side now for the lead. Jeff Green and Alayton Norgard, two experienced veterans in the Elite Racing League, going at it for the race lead. It's Alayton Norgard with little resistance from Jeff Green taking the lead in the lap 14. Now, I don't know if we can really compare the experience of Alayton Norgard versus Jeff Green. Of course, Jeff Green, the 2000 NASCAR Bush Series champion, Alayton, the um, Elite Pit Pass Network ARCA Series race winner. <laughs> I guess if we're comparing resumes, but both of these drivers have been around for quite some time. Both very respectful and respectable drivers out on the racetrack. Great to see Alayton Norgard and Jeff Green both up here right now. I'd love to see either of these guys win a race to cap off the season here tonight, Will, as uh, Alayton continues to lead Jeff Green, Justin Wadsworth, Jay Connor, and Hunter Smith 
the top five, followed by Jaden Racimus, who's worked his way by Michael Hosick. And just behind Hosick, actually now just under Michael Hosick, is where we find Gavin Higgins in the ream.com number 20 machine. Caleb Pecumer just behind, and there's Corey Abbott rounding out the top 10 ahead of Dylan Havier and Connor Thompson up there as well. Shout out to Connor, uh, Will. I don't know if you got a chance to see it last night, but in the Robilus Photography Grand National Series, he came home with a podium finish at Daytona. So a great job by Connor Thompson and tip of the hat to him. Yeah, it's awesome result to see there for the 16 machine. Connor Thompson and other drivers made leaps and bounds of progress thanks to the Pit Pass Network Arca Series. We've seen how much he's improved as a driver, not just in the Arca Series, but in all uh, the series that he competes in, the trucks and the Grand National Series. And it really showed with that third place at Daytona. You can say what you want about super speedway racing, but you've got to be there at the end to get the results. And you definitely deserve that podium finish. Just looking back from the deck lid now, of Alain Norgard back to the 38 of Jeff Green. He's falling into the clutches just a little bit off the trailing pack. He's now got Justin Moore, 12 FJ, Connor Hunter Smith, all closing the gap now to the back of the 38. As we see a battle about to start brewing just behind us, Justin Wadsworth and Jay Connor. And speaking of brewing, it's funny, I just got a text message about coffee, so kind of lines up uh, rather well right there. As Jay Connor battles on the inside of Justin Wadsworth, there's Hunter Smith behind. You can see the sparks of flying off of these machines as they get really close to the outside wall. 19 laps in, uh, 107 to go here, Will. So already working our way through the opening stages of this one. 23 drivers on board with us tonight. Lap times for these leaders are running about uh, 34.7 seconds. So to be exact, a Leighton Norgard last time by ran one second slower than his quickest lap of the day. So tire fall off already coming into play and uh, drivers such as Mitch Avere, Richard Hines and Josh Osborne are about a third of a lap down currently. And as I say that, I mean, look at all the cars that are with them. So those leaders are doing a great job of putting down the pressure, putting down the pace here so far tonight currently uh the lap time separating first and last is about one second lap time last time by between norgard and mitch Havir. so definitely a variance in pace here tonight will but uh everyone putting on a show for us so far yeah absolutely late in norgard definitely in these last dozen laps or so has been the class of the field Although the gap has shrunk slightly in the last couple of laps, we saw it kind of peak to eight and a half tenths of a second. That's now down to about seven tenths of a second as Jeff Green starts to close back in to the number 12 Tanks GG machine of a Leighton Norgar there, who was putting down some blistering laps earlier on by saving his tyres and able to get past the 38 of Jeff Green. But now you see everyone in the top five all on the same straight, led by it. A late in all guard there, so these guys all putting on a show. It's been super clean. We've gone green from lights out. But oh, still, don't jinx it's it now. All the same. <laughs> uh, you, you can't say you can't they say can green from lights out. Come on now. Let's see what our closest battle is on the racetrack. And honestly, Will, there's not a ton of them right now. Everyone single file i've heard from a lot of drivers here tonight i know you've heard uh this feedback as well that this is a fantastic car and track combination setup feels great tonight everyone seems to have the rotation that they want without having too much rotation which of course can uh, come into play as a double-edged sword oh no it looks like caleb pecumer might be battling some connection issues here will We'll wait and see if uh, we do end up losing him from the server, but looks like he's fallen all the way from the front of the field right to the tail. Yeah, I'm not seeing him at all. So unfortunate there for Caleb Pecumer, but uh, just an update on the front of the field. Well, Leighton Norgard, Jeff Green, Jay Connor, Justin Wadsworth, and Hunter Smith are the top five. Jaden Racimus with a great run so far in six. Gavin Higgins, Michael Hosick, Corey Abbott and Dylan Havir, the top 10. And 
just in case we don't get a chance to look at this car again. And uh, actually, you know what? This looks like it's about to get hairy potentially in this pack. So we'll watch this one for a little bit here. Well, as we're watching around, Jaden Racimus, Gavin Higgins, Michael Hossig, and Corey Abbott. That's the group from sixth through ninth out here on the racetrack at the World Wide Technology Raceway here in Madison, Illinois. Yeah, for a few playoff guys in this little gaggle here, every point matters. While the championship is very much, um, it, you know, Justin Waterworth basically has one hand on the trophy. There's still points to be gained and positions to be gained for everyone from second down to 12th. So Higgins, Hossack, Abbott, all in their respective points fights, looking to maximize what they can get out of the race tonight. They're currently on 7th through 9th, just behind the 19 of Jaden Racimus, who's put on an absolute clinic. He's done super well to run where he is. Harsak's putting the pressure a bit on Higgins. You see the gap just closing a little bit on the exit there of Turn 4. But just up front, I have noticed Alayton Norgard and Jeff Green, they're becoming a little bit closer together. Pit stop. They're running almost identical lap times. Raymond Hanneman coming down car. pit road here in the 80 uh, the 75 oh don't hit the stairs raymond don't hit the stairs okay now? they are solid stairs you do not oh. want to hit those stairs they can uh, they can definitely come into play so <laughs> i was a little wow. concerned they for be, uh, uh they used to be go through everything they used to be something else solid. at some point my friend Watching the side-by-side -side battle here between Michael Hosick and Jaden Racimus. Oh, Jaden! Getting sideways right there up on the high side. Corey Abbott going to drop down to the inside of him. They're going to go side-by-side -side for position number eight. Move Abbott up into that spot. He's going to chase down Michael Hosick as the Canadian driver. The driver of the number 24, RevilusPhoto.com. Chevrolet currently residing in position number seven, trying to chase down the Reem.com. Number 20 of Gavin Higgins, who holds on to position number six now. So we see a little bit of a battle for Further back, Richard Hines trying to slip and slide like he's at the water park, getting by the Josh Osborne machine. And just an update for all the Caleb Pekimer fans, he has rejoined the server. Five laps to the rear of the leaders. Yeah, unfortunate there for Caleb. The PQ Cumber, though, back on the track. That's what we love <laughs> to see. So, internet problems, hopefully, dashed for the time being. He can make it to the end of this one. Maybe a few cautions will help him get him back on the lead lap, but five laps down, he's definitely got a bit of a mountain to climb. A mountain to climb indeed as Tyler Skordensky going to get a little bit slideways right there on the front straightaway ahead of Dustin Haynes. Corey Abbott going to swing by Michael Hasek. Is Hasek going to lose a couple of spots here? Looks like Jaden Racimus going to get to his inside as we're approaching lap number 30 at this point here. Now on lap number 30, we'll see when these drivers do opt to make a visit to pit lane. If you're a little bit further back, do you try to go maybe with a different strategy? If you're someone such as Michael Hasek, you can see is struggling with the tires now. He is absolutely pushing up towards that outside wall there William White yeah we saw a scrape there on the side of the 24 um, just a couple of laps ago I think that's what caused him to lose that position to Corey Abbott I think he's just struggling with a bit of under series trying to experiment with some different lines you saw he was on the top side of turns one and two there going back to the bottom of uh, turns three and four so he's just trying to try different things and see if he can find something that gives him a bit of pace but you see up front Alain Norgard and Jeff Green just four tenths of a second apart now taking a look at Jeff Green as he currently tries to chase down a late Norgard in that 12 car. The Turner Eye Clinic in number 38 for Do Good Racing currently residing in that second spot. Jeff Green, of course, the pole sitter here tonight. Um, I'm going to give him a shout out. He was a guest on the Pit Crew podcast over on the Drive Smart Warranty YouTube channel with us last week. It was great to have him on. And uh, if you're a hunting fan, Jeff Green is the guy to talk to. I think he had to have had 50 deer on his wall, maybe even more, Will. It was absolutely insane. Well, he's an established hunter and he's hunting for the race oh, lead. Oh, look at you. See you later in Norgard there. 
Look at you Just with the transition. Jake Connor's right there as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the last race, so I would hope you figured it out by now. <laughs> as Jake Connor resides in that third spot, he's doing a nice job hunting down Jeff Green, and it doesn't necessarily look like he's tearing his tires up too much as he's going to take a look, take a little peeky to the inside of the Turner Eye Clinic machine. So those eyes coming into use here for Jay Connor as he's looking for his opportunity to sneak his way up into the second spot, maybe gain a little bit of positioning prior to the upcoming pit stop, which will, I think with the way the race is going, the drivers can feel that green flag energy that we've had so far, 35 laps in, hasn't really been too much trouble so far. I think they might be looking to come down around lap 40 to 45 range, split the race into three, so they only have to come down again uh, in the mid 80s or so. But no, we'll see what they do. Agree. It definitely depends on how far the fuel tanks go. Obviously, you don't want to stop more than you need to. So if these guys are able to take their fuel, I honestly, laps, they might elect to go halfway. I think tires might be the dictator on this uh, particular pit strategy here tonight. I don't know the fuels necessarily going to be what the uh, what the end all be all is. Is let's see if we can get another quick look. We're gonna pop the race info open once again just to take a look at the track temperature. 81 degrees so it's gone up about five degrees from the start of this one will not a hot track whatsoever very cool actually for these drivers here tonight ambient about 76 it is a night race here at worldwide technology raceway so giving these drivers really an opportunity to just race each other tonight rather than having to race the racetrack so it it's a nice way to end the season, a good way to bring up the competition as well, as currently everyone that started the race is still running. Of course, Raymond Hanneman, one lap down, and killed Pecumer five laps down, but those unfortunately uh, for Pecumer due to connection issues, and for Hanneman, that is due to an early pit stop, but let's do something fun here, Will. Let's go ahead, let's mute ourselves here, and we're gonna crank it up. We are back on the Elite Racer Network, Pit Pass Network, Arca Series at Gateway at 39 to 125. You're just seeing on your screens the battle between the Leighton Norgard and Jay Connor for the leads beginning to heat up in the last half a dozen laps or so. Jay Connor's really eating into that gap. See Leighton Norgard maybe just struggling a bit. You see Jay Connor getting right to the back now after 12. As we look from the deck lid of the Abbott Motorsports driver, Leighton Norgard has held the lead for about 25, 30 laps or so, but is now being challenged for it by a very rapid Jay Connor, who won the season opener at Legacy Atlanta a few months ago, now looking to bookend the season with a win here at Worldwide Technology Raceway. The gap now, two tenths of a second, the late Norgar certainly feeling the heat. Norgard certainly feeling the heat there indeed as Josh Osborne comes down pit road at the back. We'll keep our eyes on the front here as we just went by him. Here comes Jay Connor looking to go by a late Norgard on the inside. It's the nine of Connor up top. It's the tanks GG number 12 of a late Norgard. I think he's starting to feel the 
power of those tires going away on him right now as uh, we continue to monitor this battle down the back straight away. It's Connor on the inside. Norgard up top. Jeff Green not too far behind them either. About four tenths of a second as we hop back up to the Huckleberry Zeppelin. We'll see this battle for the race lead as Jay Connor going to clear out to position number one. Jeff Green now under pressure just behind by Justin Wadsworth. The points leader ducks down to the inside of Jeff Green. Oh, that got tight right there between third and fourth, but Norgard back down to the inside here of Jay Connor. He's going to think better of it. Get back in line. We're going to go single file first, second, third, and fourth on the racetrack as we look back to fifth place Hunter Smith. He's got a gap over Corey Abbott. Quite a large gap. Just look at that visibly. It's a large gap. Gavin Higgins under pressure though from Michael Haas because they battle it out for position number seven here on the racetrack at Worldwide Technology Raceway. Dylan Javier and Connor Thompson going to round out the top 10 as you see Javier in the shot now. He's closing in on that battle as well. Might have something to say about seventh and eighth position. Yeah, Dylan Javier's done really well to close the gap to Gavin Higgins and Michael Hossack. Just a couple tenths between all three of those drivers about seven tenths of a second you see the 57 barreling into turn three showing some brilliant pace as of current to stick with p7 and p8 running on board now with the 57 you see how they're having to wheel it out of the corner try and lean the car on the right rear tire to minimize the undersea that they get um on these long runs as these stock cars will naturally want to wear out the right front more than the right rear so these guys are trying to lean on the right rear so that they can preserve the longevity of their pace for as long as they can. But Michael Halsack really starting to put the pressure on Gavin Hick. is now coming into turn three. Halsack looks to be just a little bit better in the center of the corner in the exit. You see the gap start to close about a couple tenths of a second, now about a tenth and a half. So Halsack definitely applying the pressure. Applying the pressure indeed is Michael Hasek all over the rear end of the Gavin Higgins machine. This is the closest battle that we do currently have. Actually, as I say that, Jeff Green and Justin Wadsworth continuing to duke it out up here for third as Wadsworth took a look to the inside of Jeff Green there just a moment ago. 45 laps in the books. Coming to 46 now. 80 laps remaining in this race here tonight. The Archers of Victory 156 and the pitpassnetwork.com Arca Series season number three as Justin Wadsworth, the points leader currently in that fourth spot you see a bit of a shake and bake i guess you could say out of a late norcard and jeff green is carlos acosta gonna come down pit road in the three wide television zero two mrs goodies goodies on the rear of that machine check out mrs goodies goodies for your hooded towel needs yeah i'm starting to see a bit of that strategy variance as you mentioned some guys might try to split the race in three some guys might try to split it halfway so we're seeing a battle of the one stop versus the two stop we'll see which strategy prevails at the checker flag as we're seeing it jeff green and justin water flank for p3 all the while they're beginning to catch the 12 of a late in norgard who still holds second place a few tenths ahead of jeff green and justin water who now go side by side we're on board with jeff green is on the outside of justin Wadsworth in the sixth neck and neck off a turn four it's green is gonna have the momentum caution there's the yellow out on the racetrack hunter smith gonna go around and bring out the first caution of the day let's take a look and see what happened to the driver of the number 54 you see him up on the outside there. Josh Osborne just behind him in the 07. And Osborne going to get into the back on her Smith and send him around to bring out caution number one on the day as we approach lap number 50. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Van Smith is doing really, really well there. Josh Osborne seems to have just misjudged that ever so slightly and ends up getting into the back of the 54 of Hunter Smith, who still scored 10th, so... He's lost about five spots of that, but he's not out of the race. Minimal damage to the 54, so hopefully we'll see him towards the front again soon enough. That's definitely the goal here. As speaking of the goal, everyone going to come down pit road here as the same goal of four fresh tires and a full tank of race fuel as let's see if those stairs are genuinely 
Uh, oh, uh, I think they are. Oh. I think Michael Hosick just hit the stairs. I think Hosick might stinged his right front. Let's see. Let's see if we can get a good shot. Um. Well, he missed no, his pit box. Okay. I think he's okay for Ooh. sure. But uh, either way, unfortunate. And William White, as we do go under caution number one here on lap number 49, we're going to take a pit stop of our own as Jay Connor going to win the race off pit road ahead of a late Norgard, Jeff Green, Justin Wadsworth, and Corey Abbott, the top five. We'll be right back. It's the Archers of Victory 156 on the Elite Racing Network. Don't go anywhere. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. Racing, music, camping, it all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. All right, we are back here at the Worldwide Technology Raceway. You just heard from Worldwide Technology Raceway about their upcoming NASCAR weekend. Check them out. Get yourself some tickets. Let them know Elite Racing League sent you. Uh, one of our other sponsors here in the series as well is Blue Egg Marketing. Blue Egg is the marketing department for small businesses, small business owners. Blue Egg is your biggest fan. And, of course, PitPassNetwork.com, your home for all things motorsports. From news to reviews and interviews, check Check out pitpassnetwork.com. William White, come on, everybody. It's time to get down and battle it out for victory here with just about 75 laps to go. Some might even say it's time to boogie with Stu. How about you, Will? Yeah, we'll see how these guys fare on this first safety car restart of the evening. Jay Connor has elected to take the outside coming to lap 52. He's entered the restart zone now. He's got a late Nor guy in a second on his inside. It's a decent jump for Jay Connor. He's cleared Justin Wadsworth now alongside the top of a late Nor guy. But I don't know if he missed a shift or lost a bit of momentum going through the gears there. But late Nor guy gets back clear of the six. He's now got Jeff Green to worry about on his inside. That's about for third and fourth. But a late Nor guy just clears into second place. And Jay Connor keeps the lead on the restart but here comes Dustin Wadsworth here comes Wadsworth on the inside and Norgard and that is Gavin Higgins battling back on the high side of Jeffrey Green there as you watch this battle for second Jay Connor gonna try to pull away a little bit try to get to the dancing days out front here at Worldwide Technology Raceway down by the seaside and down by the seaside goes the uh, I believe that was Gavin Higgins machine who got absolutely sideways right there yeah, that was an awesome save there. Look at Hunter Gavin Smith Higgins coming back. Hold on. Hunter Smith, though, really capitalized on that. Yeah, you're He's right. He's in the there. top He's five. Corey Abbott. 
He's in the top he's five already. As, uh, he's already back to where he was pre-crash. So brilliant stuff there from Hunter. Absolutely. Jay Cotter continuing to lead ahead of Justin Wadsworth and a late Norgard as Norgard takes to the inside. Oh man, this Walter is, uh, just gonna have to run this is tight right here. Clear. Yeah, they're really giving everything on this restart, trying to get the track position while they can. A late Norgard just loses out to Justin Modsworth, who started on the outside in P4, now already up to P2. Now going to chase after the Niner J Connor. We see single file all throughout the field, but they're racing hard. Don't let the single file structure fool you. They are giving it absolutely everything. They absolutely are here. As you take a look from some of our trackside cameras, like you mentioned, Will, single file pretty much all throughout. Looks like Andrew Hardcastle looking to make a move on the Dylan Javier machine. That is for ninth on the circuit. As you see, Corey Abbott going for a ride on the hood of that 22. Hopefully that livery comes back next season because it has been fun to see Corey in multiple positions on the racetrack at the same time. Yeah, it definitely is it's probably the most iconic scheme, I would say, <laughs> of the Pit Pass Network Arc Series season. It, you can never Iconic? Miss the I don't orange. know, but it, it's something. Terrifying, maybe, if you see it in your rearview mirror. I think Dylan Levere might have been a bit unsettled. He's opened the door for Andrew Harcastle. He's looking for P9 on the inside of the 57. We're looking back from Dylan Javier's machine there. As Jaden Racine was there, maybe trying to follow one of them through into the top 10. But Andrew Harcastle looking to take ninth from the 57 of Dylan Hevesi. Bends it. Battle for the lead. Number one. He's going to be clear for the lead. Or for P9, but yeah, battle not, for the not lead. Not the lead, but... Jay Connor and Justin Wadsworth. <laughs> This is the battle for the lead right here. Jake Connor, Justin Wadsworth. Wadsworth uh, was trying to get up there, trying to get the spot. Not quite able to do it as a late Norgard. They're in that third position, trying to close up and get into that fight as well. As these drivers, I'd say three of probably the top drivers all season long currently uh, running one, two, and three. There's been other drivers that, of course, have had success and have been fairly decent themselves but i would say this top three right now top four including jeff green have really been probably the top four guys all season long consistently as we go side by side for the lead it's wadsworth on the bottom connor up top as we continue to duke it out for the overall lead we are quickly approaching halfway as well we're about uh, five laps away or so from that point three now as it continues to be Connor and Wadsworth up top, then it's Norgard, Jeff Green, and Hunter Smith trying to chase down the Hunter, Jeff Green, who currently sits in position number four. Yeah, we're still seeing Wadsworth and Connor as they have done all race long. It seems like they're side by side. Once again, Connor just holding off Wadsworth for the time being, but look at Leighton Norgard trying to get a piece of that. He's working the outside lane, maybe trying to get a run and help Jay Connor get past. Justin Wadsworth, there is he. Slips just behind Justin Wadsworth. I think he had a little temptation to try and force it three wide inside, but thought better of it for the time being. Is Jeff Green oh, that's gets tight the right there. Of the Leighton Norgard, capitalizing on the Leighton Norgard, compromising his entry a little bit into turn number one. Jeff Green gets to the right rear quarter panel. Hunter Smith now joining that particular scrap as they're door banging. Not showing a whole lot of love there between turns three and four there. Wow. A little bit of a door bang on letting Norgard just clears <laughs> there. Jeffrey almost hits the wall. Hunter Smith now might capitalize on this one. Backs off for the time being. I let Norgard holds on to P3. Well, Norgard doesn't necessarily just want to hold on. He he took a big dive right there to the inside of Justin Wadsworth, trying to gain some positions here as Jay Connor and Justin Wadsworth lead the way. It's a late Norgard there in third as we watch Hunter Smith and Jeff Green battle it out side by side for fourth Wadsworth and Connor continuing to duke it out here. We got battles all over this top five right now. Leighton Norgard trying to escape one battle, trying to stick his nose deep into another battle. So he's just kind of the bubble man right now as he resides in that third spot, but definitely looking hungry, looking like he's ready for a bigger piece of the cake here tonight. Yeah, he's sitting pretty 
in position number three, but you see he just gets to the left rear now of Jay Connors. Walsworth clears for the lead. Crucially, that's going to give Justin Walsworth a bonus point that is going to all but seal the championship for the number six as that league will now extend to 25 points in the championship. But Leighton Norgard trying to get clear of Jay Connors. Jay Connor made a little bit of a mistake there coming off turn four, loses out, loses out to Hunter Smith as well, who's now up into third. Leighton Norgard now trying to challenge for the lead. I'm incredibly impressed by Hunter Smith right now. He was up in the top 10 earlier on, ended up getting spun out and uh, having to go to the rear of the field, now worked his way up to position number three. And that's only in a matter of about 10 to 12 laps that he's done that will. So very impressive out of that 54. He wants to end the season on a high note as well. Hasn't made it to victory lane just yet, but definitely wants to do it before the season comes to an end as Norgard sticks his nodes to the in. What's a nodes? He sticks his nose to the inside of Justin Wadsworth trying to get up there, trying to take that race lead as, as it's Wadsworth, Norgard, Smith, Connor, and Green. Green, the top five, followed by Abbott, Hossick, Higgins, Hardcastle, and Jesse. Or no, not Jesse. It's Jaden Racimus in position number 10. Yeah, I think Wadsworth and Norgar, that's currently one of our closest fights in this top 10. Hunter Smith just in tow behind the lead, too, as the late Norgar again with a big dive into turn one, getting right to the left rear of Justin Wadsworth, definitely keeping the six car honest as he leads the race for the first time tonight. Alayton Norgard led about 30 odd laps earlier on during that first stint before the yellow flag came out so he is no stranger to leading tonight. We'll see if he can get that number 12 back to the point of the field but he's got to get past the championship leader who has been super consistent in these last few races squeaked his way to the regular season championship by just a single point at the finale IRP has gone back to back in the last two races at Chicago Land and Andover to put himself in the position that he's in now. And he's looking to get a hat trick of wins for only the second time in series history after Justin Fuller went three in a row last season en route to a very impressive debut season. But he's got a Leighton Norgard all over his back bumper. I actually had a chance to talk with Justin Fuller earlier today. He's doing well. The uh, multi-time winner here in the Pit Pass Network Arca Series. As you mentioned, Justin Wadsworth looking to do it himself here tonight. Hadn't won an elite race before just a couple of weeks ago and has now won a few. So we'll see if uh, Wadsworth's able to cap the season with another one. If Norgard's able to get up there and snag a victory of his own, that's definitely high on his priority list before the end of this season, which uh, is less than 60 laps away now as Hunter Smith, Jay Connor, and Jeff Green round out the top five right now. Here comes Michael Hasek taking a look on the inside of Gavin Higgins. Going to clear him, set his sights on Corey Abbott, who's having a rapid ascension through the field as he closes in on the back of Jeff Green. Green currently in that fifth spot, but looks like he may be going backwards at this point as Abbott getting all over the rear end of that machine. We have a battle brewing again for the race lead, though, as a Leighton Norgard closing in rather rapidly on Justin Wadsworth for the top spot on the podium. Yeah, Leighton Norgard really keeping Justin Wadsworth honest now. Not going to let that hat trick come easy for the number six machine. As Leighton Norgard blinks out a little bit there. A little bit of Houdini magic trying to side count the number six, but he keeps him honest. As now he's going to look to the inside, I believe, into turn three. Just a couple hundredths the gap, but Leighton Norgard sends it deep into turn three. Wadsworth gives him the room, gives him the respect. As we've seen all season long, some of the best driver on Ireland. Oh, Irish Wadsworth in the wall. Wadsworth just nicks the wall there. Norgard, though, gets very loose off the corner. Wadsworth's going to surge ahead by about half a car length before they get to turn one. Norgard, though, on the inside. Wadsworth on the outside. The outside, probably the preferable line for racing side by side, as that's going to allow Wadsworth to have the run off the corner. Norgard now trying to stay on the left rear, but has to file in. Going into turn number three. Wadsworth retains the lead for the time being. 
Wadsworth does retain the lead for the time being, but here comes a late Norgard once again. Norgard seems like he has a quick enough car right now, Will. Just is not able to finish the pass. He's gotten his nose to the inside of that machine multiple times. Here he goes again, giving it a little sniff. We'll see if he's able to stick the whole nose in this time and get himself side by side with Wadsworth. Not able to do it once again as they continue to be nose to tail down the back straight away. Here comes the nose. Once again off of Norgard. This is going to be a deep lunge to the inside by the driver of the number 12. He's going to have the advantage as they come off of turn number four. At the line, though, it's Justin Wadsworth once again over a late Norgard. The one thing that's happening here, Will, is... Wadsworth is still on the high lane so he's getting the opportunity to wind up get on the gas a little bit sooner than a late Norgard is on the inside because if Norgard pushes up he's going to get into Wadsworth that's going to create a big mess probably some drama but Justin still has a ton of racetrack on the high side of him to be able to get on that gas pedal and get that good run off the corner so an advantage there despite Norgard being the quicker car right now yeah, definitely Norgard having the pace of Justin Wadsworth, but not quite the execution to get the pass done. Justin Wadsworth beautifully using the higher grooves on the racetrack to preserve his momentum in the mid corner. And while late Norgard does sometimes get these runs to see now as he pulls up to the left rear of Justin Wadsworth, we're going to see another deep lunge into turn three, no doubt, from the driver as well, maybe try and slide up in front or at least clear him into the mid corner as I think he's gonna just about do it. Wadsworth tries to hang around the outside. Wow. Norgard is gonna clear. Wadsworth though will have the run. Does he retaliate with a crossover move or does he hang back? He likes to hang back for the time being so Alayton Norgard's your new race leader. One thing to point out as well on what Alayton just did over the last handful of laps by sending it in deeper. He's having to use a little bit more force to slow the car down and rotate it as well, Will. So one thing that Alayton might be dealing with uh, sooner than Justin Wadsworth is excess tire wear. That's something that could come into play for him. Might be something that causes him to slip back a little bit. So we'll keep our eyes on that. Speaking of slipping back, though, Justin Wadsworth sliding back a little bit towards the nose of that Jay Connor machine as Norgard starting to put a little bit of a gap about a half second now as we're going to come to 50 to go next time by for Leighton Norgard, Justin Wadsworth and Jay Connor the top three let's take a look a little bit further back at uh, some battles that we haven't really had a chance to touch on yet. Jaden Racimus clears Dylan Javier into position number 10. Mark Robilis holds on to the 12th spot ahead of Connor Thompson. Raymond Hanneman, he had the early pit strategy here tonight. Currently resides in 14th at a David Carpenter. Good to see old Carp out here tonight in the number 71 Ronster Raps machine. Shout out to Ron Harrington. Carlos Acosta in 16th, Tyler Skordensky in 17th, Dustin Haynes there in 18th, Kyle Simmons in the 19th spot, Mitchell Javier in 20th, Richard Hines currently resides in 21st. It's so great to see Richard back on the racetrack, longtime veteran of Erska as well as Elite and some other leagues as well. And of course, Josh Osborne now finds himself on pit lane with Caleb Pecumer, multiple laps down, residing in the 23rd spot due to some connection issues. Yeah, unfortunately for some of those guys that have been trapped, you know, laps down originally, such as Caleb Pecumer with internet issues or, you know, guys like Carlos Costa who got the short end of the stick there with the timing of the yellow. He obviously just pitted under green flag conditions before that came out. All the while, the late Norgard really putting on a clinic in this stage of the running, almost a second clear of Justin Mortoff already, who is now trying to protect second place from the charging number nine of Jay Connor. About a second back from them is Hunter Smith and Jeff Green fighting for fourth. So, Alayton Norgard definitely setting the pace for the time being with less than 50 laps to go. Norgard's done a great job here so far, Will. Currently holding on to that top spot ahead of Wadsworth and Connor. Connor really closing the gap here on Justin Wadsworth. Has been doing it slowly but surely over the last handful of laps, probably the last dozen or so. And this behind them 
this is what i like to call a gaggle william white it is hunter smith jeff green Corey abbott gavin higgins michael hosick and an extension off of that is joshua osborne as well currently uh, a lap or two down actually make it three we'll add a lap and two together to make three laps down for Josh Osborne as he is back in 22nd, but closing in rather quickly on this group on his fresh tires as we're side by side for fourth between Hunter Smith and Jeff Green. Also side by side for six between Gavin Higgins and Corey Abbott as we work our way into turn number one and two. Looks like Smith gonna have the advantage for that spot over Jeff Green, but it will still be side by side between Higgins and Abbott is just up ahead of them there. You see X setting the shot now is that battle for second between Justin Wadsworth and Jay Connor that one getting really close that one actually going to be side by side now so we will join that battle in progress as Connor on the inside Wadsworth up top they're about 1.2 seconds behind a late Norgard and for Norgard what he wants to see is these guys falling back and battling side by side in his mirror because that just means clean track ahead for him. He has about 15 seconds or so until he catches up to Richard Hines, who is the next car to go one lap down. But ahead of Richard, should a Leighton get there, is a line of traffic. It's Hines, Javier, Simmons, Skordinsk, ooh, Tyler Skordinsky into the wall as he's going to fall back a couple of positions there. Looks like some heavy damage on the right front of that uh, real tree machine. I don't think the camo going to hide the damage this time, though, Tyler, unfortunately. Yeah, definitely a bit costly there for Tyler Skordensky. He just loses another position there to Simmons in the 85, so Tyler Skordensky ran strong earlier in the race, now down to P19. Looks to get back past him as they see that on the tick on the bottom of your screen, but we're focused now on the battle between Jay Connor and Justin Wadsworth. That has recently concluded with Jay Connor coming out on top on that particular occasion. Slightly fresher tyres than that of the six, but Norgard. This is tumbling down the ticker. I think Alayton has just disconnected. I unfortunately think you're right. I, I think our... Oh, he's back. He's back. He's hey, back. Harry Houdini. Uh, Alain Nordini, the leader, currently 1.6 seconds ahead of Jay Connor. One thing for Alain entering tonight, Will, is they were having bad storms in his area. I think he was under a tornado watch or warning earlier today that was going to extend through to race time. <laughs> so... Hopefully everything's okay as Norgard okay. continues to lead. Yeah, late Norgard, obviously a winner at Road America earlier in the season. Could have been heartbreakingly denied his second win of the season. But as of right now, operations still going smoothly for the 12. He's the second and a half clear of Jay Connor. Obviously, you did mention the tornado watches that are in place. He's based in Kansas City, Missouri there. Is a lane normal Thomas Smith into the back of Gavin Higgins. That's going to be a yellow. Oh, caution out again. Hunter Smith involved, unfortunately, again. And has, has dropped. Has he fallen out of the server? He's, he's, he's fallen. <sighs> Can he get back up? As it's he Hunter is. Smith into the back of Gavin Higgins, Michael Hosick into the back of him, and that is going to bring out the caution once again as Gavin Higgins got moving but nearly collected some additional cars. Hunter Smith going to back up and tell Michael Hosick, I'm going anyways, as that'll bring out caution number two here on lap number 84. Your leader now, Jay Connor, leading the way ahead of Justin Wadsworth, Jeff Green, Corey Abbott, Andrew Hardcastle, Jaden Racima, Dylan Javier, Gavin Higgins, Mark Robilis, and Connor Thompson, the top 10 as everyone comes down pit road. We're going to step away for our break here, and we'll be right back. This is the Arches of Victory 156 on the Elite Racing Network. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. 
go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. Racing, music, camping, it all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. We are back here. It's the Arches of Victory 156 in the Pit Pass Network.com Arca series. Justin Wadsworth has taken over the race lead ahead of Jake Connor, Jeff Green, Corey Abbott, and Corey Abbott. No, that's Andrew Hardcastle, but Corey Abbott riding on the hood of that machine. Will, I don't know about you, but anytime I see the hood on the Andrew Hardcastle machine, I feel like I need the Jaws music. I would definitely agree. It's pretty terrifying to have the, you know, Corey's Corey terrifying in general. Closing. He's terrifying enough when you're behind him. You're probably going to get wrecked. <laughs> Who said that? What? No, I'm kidding. I didn't mean that. I love Corey, really. He's my boss. I kind of have to. Yeah, I mean, um, we're contractually obligated yeah, uh, when we're on the racetrack to, be to, nice. to like him, I guess. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, no. <laughs> I would definitely be a little unsettled if I had that paint job barreling towards me when I'm trying about to get overtaken. So yeah, Hardcastle <laughs> now P5 on the restart, so he's done well in the pit cycle. So he's going to try and scare the front four into getting out of his way, and he's going to win his second race of the season. Now, uh, question here. Actually, the question was just answered. A Leighton Norgard only one lap down after falling out of the servers. So he's not necessarily out of it yet, Will. He could bounce back. Of course, we saw Hunter Smith earlier on was involved in a caution. And by the time the last caution came out that he was also involved in, he was battling for a podium position. So... Anything can happen here as we get set to go green once again. Less than 40 laps to go. It's Justin Wadsworth on the loud pedal. Corey Abbott on the pillow up top as he doesn't get moving whatsoever. Justin Wadsworth going to... Ja, uh, Jay Connor. There we go. One of the J names. Going to clear ahead of Corey Abbott on the high side. Abbott going to fall back a little bit. Here comes Jeff Green. Green going to make contact with Connor. They're going to slip and slide and settle into position number two. Is Abbott under pressure a little bit there from Gab? Gavin Higgins. Higgins gets by Andrew Hardcastle, who's battling side by side with Jaden Racimus for position number six. Yeah, we're seeing battles all throughout the field. Andrew Hardcastle trying to clear Jaden Racimus. Racimus into the wall there. That's going to hurt his momentum coming off the corner. They might see a little bit of cosmetic damage, hopefully not too uh, detrimental to the performance of the 19 cars. He's still trying to hang on the right rear of Andrew Hardcastle there, trying to keep sixth place there as he does get the run off the corner Andrew Hardcastle there not with an ideal exit he might have to relinquish P6 for the time being he looks for a lunge but decides against it he's down to P7 but Justin Wadsworth remains in the lead another tight battle right here it's still in Javier Raymond Hanneman and Michael Hasek battling for positions number 9 10 and 11 at the back end of that top 10 here 
It's Severe on the inside. Hasek, the trailing car. And Raymond Hanneman up top. Carlos Acosta not too far behind. And Mitch Severe just outside the top 10 as well. Having himself a rather solid run as we jump back up to the front here. Let's, uh, let's just do a quick reload of our ticker as it's telling us Justin Wadsworth is in the pits. And clearly, folks, that is not the pits. That is the racetrack that we're seeing right there. Yeah, absolutely. He is absolutely putting, putting on a clinic there. He's half a second clear of Jay Connor, who himself is half a second clear of Corey Abbott, who's in a race high at P3 at the minute after getting past Jeff Green there a couple laps ago. So strong one there for the driver of 21. But Justin Wadsworth, championship leader and race leader, looking for a hat trick now. And he is half a second clear with the gap very much stabilizing there at the front. Gap stabilizing at about a half of a second between first and second on the racetrack as we watch Corey Abbott battling it out here with Jeff Green. Green currently in position number four. It is Gavin Higgins there in fifth ahead of Jaden Racimus. Andrew Hardcastle up there as well, just ahead of Connor Thompson. So that battle that we had for sixth fell apart just a little bit there, Will, as these drivers settling in, just trying to find themselves a bit of a rhythm one thing i want to see though i i, I gotta see this let's go from Jaden. oh yeah that's scary that's terrifying if i'm Jaden, i am i'm oh wow God. Corey's face almost got smashed right there into the back end of the Jaden Racimus car. That was uh, that was a little scary. Maybe a little bit too close for comfort for Jaden Racimus. Wow. My heart jumped out of my throat there. I thought Jaden's day was done. At the it's like one of those of jump scare Corey videos. <sighs> that was a jump scare. I have to. Corey, my you're chair. scary, man. <laughs> it's Carlos Acosta battles it out here with Mitch Javier trying to chase down Raymond Hanneman. This is the battle for position number 12 on the racetrack. It's Fear up top. Acosta on the inside. Hanneman just ahead of them there in that 11th spot. Dave Carpenter right behind as well as Dustin Haynes. So this is the second group that we haven't necessarily touched on a ton here. So far as Acosta having a good run, looking to get that 11th spot off of Raymond Hanneman. But this is a lot of cars together back here. Yeah, it's a big battle going on now, headed by the P11 car 75 of Raymond Hanneman. You see Haynes and Skornetsky on the inside there as Hunter Smith now looking to work his way back through after being involved in that second caution after contact with the 20th Gavin Higgins, he gets right up to the back of Dustin Haynes, looking to make a move for P14. Here comes up the Smith to the inside of the Canadian Dustin Haynes further back. That's Heinz and Skorlensky battling for position, but Hunter Smith looking to clear the number three street limit. Wrangler tribute car, very much similar to Dale Earnhardt's Wrangler ride from the early 1980s. Hunter Smith do you remember the 80s, Will? Into the 40s. I do not remember the 80s. I was born in 2005, so I oh very gosh. much don't remember the 80s. <laughs> I probably have a lot of stuff in my house that is well older than you. Oh, definitely. It's, it's a little scary. I probably have yeah. a. I think I have a TV Peter older than you. Old, man. <laughs> I'm not that much old. You were 2005. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I was 10 when you were born. Yeah. I knew how to play outside and have an imagination by the time you were born yeah kids your age and never was, played outside rotten. yeah no we rot in our bedrooms now <laughs> so so do. Do. <laughs> eat some crisps and not yeah, steak crisps. fries and yeah, as, I don't want steak fries <laughs> as we see a battle here well not much of a battle Jeff Green just said I'm coming through and Corey Abbott surrendered to his master Jeffrey Green let him go on by one thing to watch here Justin Wadsworth catching a little bit of lap traffic that's Caleb Pecumer up ahead of him here I think Pecumer took a bathroom break just before we were set to go green here so that's going to open the door to a little bit of traffic for Is Justin Wadsworth no no no, they call him that because I didn't know how to say his name when he first came around. So that's what that was. No, I think that definition is a lot funnier. 
we'll, we'll go with that. Well, just for you, just because we only have 25 laps left together here, we'll uh, we'll go with that one. Yay. As, okay, as Wadsworth closes in on the PQ, the PQ cumber himself, Caleb Pecumer in position number 23. Pecumer, this driver's done a really good job. He had a very solid run going in the truck series on Sunday at VIR, ended up getting wrecked by another competitor and uh, finished outside the top 10. But his teammate Dylan Javier, who's running in the 10th spot right now, able to pick up a top five Sunday. So kudos to those guys. Shout out to Tyler Fody. He's done a lot of coaching of these guys in Pecumer and the Haviers to try to, and Frank Fody as well, to try to get them up to a uh, competitive level. And he's really been able to do that. So shout out to Lake Norman, uh, Tyler Fody, everyone over there for what they've been able to accomplish and the way that they've developed as a team. It's really great to follow along. And speaking of follow along, let's follow this battle right here. It's Andrew Hardcastle and Jaden Racimus, one of the Rasami currently on the inside. That's the battle for position number six. Ooh, somebody just hit the wall. Didn't sound very nice. David quite caught who that was. It didn't we, sound like a good noise. No, it no, it, it definitely did not sound very good. Your car does not want to sound like a trampoline with uh, with somebody bouncing on it. That's that's usually not the sound you want to hear. As we continue to monitor the battle between Hardcastle and Jaden Racimus. I think Andrew Hardcastle may be able to clear this time as they work their way down the front straightaway. Yes, he does. Yep. Move Andrew Hardcastle up to position number six. Gavin Higgins doing a solid job there in that fifth spot. Has himself a bit of a bubble. Not too much ahead of him. Not too much behind him. Just doing a really solid job here today in that number 20 machine. 23 to go, Will. And it's Justin Wadsworth out front. But don't count out Jay Connor as he's getting bigger and bigger in this shot getting closer to the justin wadsworth machine for that battle to ensue for the race lead yeah absolutely jay connor definitely keeping justin wadsworth honest he's got a big lead now seven tenths of a second wadsworth just needs to keep his rhythm up and he should be home free regarding it disregarding any potential inexplicable mishaps that may befall the number six but right now it looks all hunky-dory for the Houston Veld number six piloted by Justin Wadsworth, championship leader, race leader, all signs point to a championship trophy at the end of this, but he's still got 21 laps to go before he can lift, lift that trophy. Raymond Hanneman coming back down pit lane in the number 75 street limit machine. Didn't expect that Dustin Haynes getting into the outside wall. So street limit falling apart here quite literally on the racetrack right now as unfortunately um, for them their strategy uh, might be going to miss is one thing to watch here connor's got that lead down he's cut about two tenths of a second into that over the last couple of laps here will so slow and steady might be paying off here for jay connor as he tries to close that gap on justin wadsworth for the race lead yeah we've seen a fair amount of green flag runs long green flag runs so far tonight so Jay Connor definitely electing to prioritize the longevity of the life of his tires, and that seems to be paying dividends. The gap down to half a second as they cross the split marker going into turn three after coming down the back straight away. See, visibly the gap is smaller now, just half a second between these two. Wadsworth looks to be pretty solid on an exit compared to Jay Connor, ekes out a couple hundredths of a second, but Jay Connor as we ride on board with him now, especially into the entry and just around the whole lap in general, seems to have just a slight edge over Wadsworth. At the current moment, we'll see if these guys have to make one more pit stop before the checker flag or whether they can extend to the end of this race. But you see Connor just catching little by little to the back of Justin Wadsworth. Four and a half tenths is the gap between Wadsworth and Connor as they come to 18 laps to go on the season. Wadsworth inching ever so close to picking up his first elite racing league title. He's 
almost got it locked down. I think mathematically he definitely uh, does have that championship clinched, but still wants to get out there, still wants to win it and uh, see what he can do with just 18 laps to go. Let's monitor some battles a little bit further back. We're going to go way back, actually. This is the battle between Dustin Haynes, Mitch Avier, and Kyle Simmons. So 16th, 17th, and 18th on the racetrack as Dustin Haynes holds that 16th spot. Mitch Avier all over the rear end of him, trying to work his way up into position number 16 now as he's going to go side by side with Kyle Simmons. Simmons going to take the spot as Mitch Avier going to continue to fall towards the rear of the field. Another battle that is somewhat starting to shape up is actually a multi-car gaggle here. Andrew Hardcastle, Jaden Racimus, Connor Thompson, Michael Hasek, and Dylan Javier all together. So that is sixth through tenth on the racetrack as uh, we are 17, now 16 to go. This battle between Hardcastle and Jaden Racimus just does not want to go away. Yeah, definitely. Jaden Racimus, even after getting overtaken by the 22, Andrew Hardcastle doesn't want to let the car with Corey's face on it get away without a fight. Just 16 laps for Jaden to try and take back that position from Andrew. He's run incredibly well in these latter stages to get that car comfortably into P6. While it hasn't been without resistance from his competitors, he's definitely earned the right to be up there. Meanwhile, the battle, the gap has sort of stabilized at around that four and a half tenths of a second mark, but as I say that, Connor eats into it a little bit on entry. We saw it dip down to about three and a half tenths, but Justin Wadsworth on the exit looks to just have a little bit more purchase. This is the mid corner. Connor starting to eat it back now with a little bit of a better exit and the slipstream at his disposal. So the battle's definitely brewing, but it's definitely a slow burner for sure. Taking a look at the lap time comparison, Jay connor has been quicker four of the last five laps, but it just has not been substantial enough for Jay Connor to really bite into the lead. And that lap, of course, going just a little bit slower than Jay, than uh, Justin Wadsworth. So giving up everything he gained on the previous lap and a little bit more. So Jay Connor definitely a quick car right now. I just don't know if he has enough and a sustainable uh, lap to get up there and pass the Justin Wadsworth car for the lead. He's going to give it his all, absolutely. And Justin Wadsworth knows that he's going to have to push it a little bit extra if he wants to pull away from Jay Connor as Connor continues to try to close up on that gap a little bit. We'll take a look again a little bit further back. Looks like Hardcastle has a bit of a gap over Jaden Racimus. So this one not coming into play too much. Connor Thompson keeping them honest. We are going to go side by side between Hasek and Elite Norgard as Norgard of course one lap down at this point that not really coming into play too much at this point so the closest battle and the one we have to watch is for the race lead between Justin Wadsworth and Jake Connor which is 12 laps to go William White yeah it looked like Jake Connor's over that last lap into the gap just a little bit we saw it about three and a half tenths coming across the stripe and he's got a brilliant exit coming out of turn two so jay connor just starting to apply the pressure a little bit more to the six of justin moss with right on board now with the nine machine as they come through turns three and four see the gap on the, on the top left watch that gap as they come out the corner it's 0.36 seconds that's 0.35 0.36 again so was off a little bit better on exit even with the slipstream for jay connor Coming through turns one and two, you'll see the different lines that they take. Jay Connor elects to go a little bit higher in the mid corner, tries to diamond it and cut back down for a better exit. Walterworth with a little bit of a tank sniper coming off the corner, but the gains are marginal but frequent for Jay Connor. And coming off to turn four. We'll see Jay Connor just nicks the ball a little bit. Justin Wadsworth's going to eke out a couple hundreds of a second. The gap now four tenths as they barrel into town one. Just ten laps to go. Now some time is ticking for the nine machine of Jay Connor to try and get past the race leader and championship leader Justin Wadsworth. Trying to do what only Justin Fuller has done in this league before, and that is to pull off a perfect 
hat trick of three race wins in a row. He won at Chicagoland, he won at Dover. Now he's looking to bookend a potential championship winning season with a win here at World by Technology Raceway. But the gap shrinking just a little bit, 0.32 seconds coming out of turn four. Definitely closing a little bit here. As you can see, Jay Connor consistently grabbing a little bit of extra time. Visibly, you can see it closing up here, Will. Nine laps to go in the season. It's Justin Wadsworth ahead of Jay Connor. Connor may have the opportunity to give a full send or a half send at least to try to get up there to Justin Wadsworth on the last lap. He's going to try to do it clean, though, as best as he possibly possibly can as you can see the gap there i believe wadsworth was a little bit quicker last time by yes he was by about uh i know he wasn't oh this is showing us jeff green so yes he was <laughs> quicker as of course our ticker wanted to play with us right there will eight to go it's wadsworth connor and green the three j's are on the podium right now in justin j and jeff the top three three tenths of a second separating first and second no other battles really brewing whatsoever on the racetrack a potential battle between dylan Avir and michael hasek about to kick off but we'll keep our eyes on the front of the pack here as you can see wadsworth there there's connor just behind him as they work their way down the back straightaway. Quickly approaching. Five to go. We're going to be six this time. Jake Connors had uh, such a good season. Still no sponsor. For next year, folks, hit him up. Get on board that number nine. He needs some partners to get himself just one step closer to a championship. Half a second now. Separate ooh. the two of them as Connor gets the outside wall. That might be curtains for Jake Connor. He's lost a couple of tenths of a second to Justin Wadsworth as a result of putting his right rear into the wall. The gap now seven tenths of a second. I don't know if that's gonna really hinder the performance of the six machine or the nine machine, beg your pardon, too much. But the gap might now be just about insurmountable for Jay Connor with Justin Wadsworth in front of him. He's done well to close back the majority of that gap actually through this particular lap with Justin Wadsworth. Now with just five laps to go before he completes the perfect hat trick, he's got six tenths of a second back to Jay Connor. It's just a little bit more breathing room. That might be the race winning move, the race losing move for Jay Connor as he makes a little mistake there. Five laps to go. Justin Wadsworth has won the last two races. Looks to make it three in a row here tonight at the World Wide Technology Raceway in Madison, Illinois. He has done a fantastic job. Qualified second. Got himself up to the lead and has really stayed here most of the night tonight. Having himself a great run. That's exactly what he needed to ensure that he could secure that championship in the Pit Pass Network Arca Series. And he is well on his way to doing so with just four laps to go jay connor falling back a little bit might even lose the second spot if he continues to descend towards jeff green green in third abbott in fourth Corey abbott a driver that's had himself a great time in the pit pass number Garga series as well just didn't have the opportunity to get up there and compete for the championship when it came down to the end of this season but next year watch for that number 21 he is coming for the title with three laps to go let's take a look here just a little bit further back it's gavin higgins another driver that's having himself a good night here tonight gonna wrap up a strong season just ahead of andrew hardcastle and will this race winner andrew hardcastle won at talladega a couple of rounds ago i think both of us nearly blew our vocal cords watching that but we got to watch this right now as Jake Connor closing back in as the freezer doors cracked open. Popsicle sticks are in the air, and we are just two laps to go. Yeah, Jay Connor's going to have to find a lot of pace very, very quickly. There's only about two and a half miles to go before they see this trap again to take the check of flag at the moment. It looks like Justin Wardrop's going to take the win, but Jay Connor's really closing in. We saw the gap kind of... At, at its lowest, it was about three-tenths of a second pre-mistake from Jay Connor, but he's already clawed it all back. He's three-tenths back, but I don't know if he's going to have enough time because they're going to take the white flag as they come out of turn four this time. 
a white flag is displayed one lap remaining in the 2024a pit pass network arca series season justin wadsworth continuing to lead the way ahead of jay connor as connor tries everything he possibly can gets a little bit sideways here we'll see if he offers up a full send into turn number three as they head there for the final time here tonight in the final time this season justin wadsworth gonna work his way off of turn number four and for the final time this season checkered flag your race winner and your champion is justin wadsworth and it's a perfect hat trick to bookend a championship winning campaign for justin wadsworth thoroughly deserved there driver the number six after chris wright and trey Ison before him justin wadsworth is our latest champion in the pit bus network arca series Justin Wadsworth, Jay Connor, Jeff Green, the podium. Corey Abbott and Gavin Higgins round out the top five as they come to congratulate Justin Wadsworth. Andrew Hardcastle going to bring it home in sixth. Ahead of Connor Thompson, Hunter Smith, a great rebound to eighth. Ahead of Jaden Racimus and Dylan Javier, the top ten. Carlos Acosta, Michael Hosick, Dave Carpenter, Mark Robiles, and the rest of the field we will show in just a moment. But right now, the moment is his. We're going to step away and let Justin Wadsworth burn it down for the final time this season. Your champion is Justin Wadsworth. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series in officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. Racing, music, camping, it all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year.
and we are back here. It's the Arches of Victory 156. I'm going to pass it along here to William White that's going to be standing by with our third place finisher, Jeff Green. Jeff Green, third place finisher. How do you evaluate that race altogether and, you know, one of many podiums this season? Uh, it was oh, it was an awesome race. Got to pole, and I thought I was running really hard. I didn't want to run as hard as I was running, and they come all they all come by me. So I felt like I had to step it up some, and I felt like I did. But on the last run there, uh, I think we'd been all right if we went green the whole race. But uh, you know, I, I guess we had two cautions. But uh, I just needed more laps. I felt like those guys were abusing their tires, and I tried to save a little bit on the last uh, stint there, and. Uh, I just run out of time. I was catching them. I was about a tenth or two tenths faster on some laps than those guys in front of me. And uh, but it was still a good race for us. Uh, it's really fun car to drive at this track. I really didn't. I don't really like this track, but this car here was seemed like it was really fun to drive. And uh, you had to shift, you know, later in the run and one and in, in, in middle of one and two. And uh, that's where those guys was beating me earlier. I wasn't shifting at all. And so uh, when I figured that out, I felt felt like I picked up time and was able to to stay with them and just so hard to pass. I knew if I got to them, I'd, I'd have to wreck them to pass them. It was just so hard to pass, especially when the tires got wore out. So everybody did a good job. I mean, everybody raced really clean. The the, I mean, the, the guys that I raced around, we raced really hard, but we raced, we gave each other room, and that's uh, exactly what I think needs to be done. And each week, uh, those guys are learning, and uh, you know, especially the guys that's the first year for them. So I'm glad that um, you know that went that caution free, to, so those guys can uh, you know add to their collection for next year to be able to to have more uh, control of the car and things like that. So uh, that's what the Arkansas series are about. Everybody's learning, and so I'm proud to be a part of it. Elsie yeah, mentioned the awesome racing that we had tonight. We've had it all season long. Just from your perspective, what's been your personal highlight or favorite moment of the season as it comes to a close? Oh, uh, I don't know. Just being in, in here every week, be able to uh, got a couple poles and let a, a lot of laps. So um, got close, uh, at, I guess, at Talladega uh, or maybe Daytona. I can't remember which one. I'm coming to the white flag I was leading. So, um, but it seemed like I was a second or third place car about every week. Uh, unless I messed it up or something. So uh, just every week I think is a highlight. A lot of fun racetracks and uh, things that you got to, you know, put in your, your seat to, to get around the racetrack. Got to make it happen. So uh, it's fun to do. Well, to book in this season, any sponsors you want to thank or shout-outs you want to give for getting that 38 on the podium once again? Oh, always Turner Eye Clinic in, in Arkansas. Uh, Clifford does a great job for me and why he watches the races. So, uh, pulls for me and uh, he, he's a he's a fan of, of this kind of racing fan of racing period but he really like he really enjoys the races on on, uh, on YouTube so um, then thank you all for for what y'all do I mean I know it's tough to not be not racing going up there and talking about everybody so thank you all for doing that I appreciate the kind words awesome racing from you all season thanks for your time and congrats on the podium thanks William appreciate it that was Jeff Green, your third place finisher tonight. And now I am joined by Jay Connor. Jay, you came up just a little bit short there at the end. What more did you need to get up there and pass that six car of Justin Wadsworth? Well, the first thing I needed was to uh, not uh, shoot myself in the foot and drag the front stretch wall with about eight or so to go there. That's a good um, start. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, the the first run there, the way the tires fell off, I was really confident going into that last run if we had a longer run, and Justin just figured it out with the tires, and uh, I was able to just keep creeping on him, creeping on him. I don't know what I would have done with him when I got there, but once I got to about uh, three-tenths, two-tenths back there, and I drugged the wall, that was that was about it. So then I just spent the last few laps just trying to maintain uh, my gap to uh, Jeff Green there, and I figured at that point that he had it. It wasn't, wasn't worth trying to overdrive it and make any more mistakes. Now, Jay, looking back at your season, obviously you won the series, the season opener at Daytona, uh, not Daytona. We went to Legacy Atlanta. You finished first there, got a couple podiums throughout the season, including at Michigan and tonight here at Gateway. How would you sum up your season? Was this a success for you? Is there areas that you want to work on next season? What uh, how do you describe this one? Um. Yeah, it was it was I guess successful. Um, it would have been nice to bookend it here with with a win, but 
um, the, the biggest thing is just limiting mistakes. And, uh, you know, there was four or five races there where um, if I was a little more patient or just paid attention a little more and didn't make some stupid mistakes that uh, would have been a tighter, a tighter gap in the points and uh, we might have had a shot for the championship. But um, other than that, just fun running with these guys. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a fun car and a fun series to, uh, to run there. And before we let you go here tonight for the final time this season, any, uh, well, you don't have any sponsors on the car, but any shout outs you want to give? Uh, just all the family and friends that watch every week and uh, shout out to you guys. Um, thanks for you uh, keeping the series going for a couple seasons and uh, doing the broadcasts and the announcing and stuff. And um, the broadcasts are some of the best on the channel, some of the best quality and uh, and announcing and stuff. So thanks to you guys for uh, for putting it on. And of course, Chad, for uh, running the league in, in its uh, entirety there. We definitely appreciate that, Jake. Congratulations on a great finish tonight. And uh, we look forward to seeing what you can do next season. All right. Thank you, guys. That was Jake Connor, your runner up. And now it's time for the man of the hour, the champion, the race winner. It's Justin Wadsworth standing by with William White. Justin Wadsworth, 2024 A Pit Pass Network Harker Series champion. Just describe that feeling for me. Man, it feels great, man. What a season. I uh, I was just telling Jeff and Jess there, I uh when I won that regular season by a point, I didn't uh wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to win one. I thought maybe if I won the champion it should be like uh Matt Kenseth back in the day, but uh and to pull three and off in a row, I just uh I just can't believe it. Um championship too, it's just been it's been an awesome season. You know, you gotta have a little bit of luck too and Everybody races clean up front, so that was awesome. Um, you know, honestly, it's it's great to win the championship. I'm a little bummed I can't come back, to be honest. Yeah, obviously you mentioned those three in a row. You're only the third in series history to do it. Justin Fuller and Trey Eidson beat you to it, but that's definitely an elite list of names to be a part of. But across this whole season, obviously, it's been awesome from start to finish. What's been your personal highlight or favorite moment? Um, probably the first win, um, not only just cause it was my first win, but it was really cool to do it at Chicago land. That was, uh, that was my home track. I grew up about 20 minutes from there. And the, the first races I went to as a little kid, um, so to go there and kind of take the first win there was a little extra special, I'd say. That's good. Well, obviously you ran away with a championship at season's end. Anyone you want to thank for getting you that trophy? Yeah, I mean, as you guys know, my dad crew chiefs for me. He's been he's been awesome throughout the whole season. Um, I also like to thank you guys. You guys have been great. You know, you guys are awesome announcers. Uh, Robert's just awesome up in the booth. I appreciate him putting on the series. Uh, and William too. I think you were great up in the booth, but also um, doing race control too. I thought you were real fair. Um, and I, you know, we all appreciate that too. And I think it's kind of made for a really really great season and a great series. Well, appreciate the kind words, man. Obviously, congratulations on your championship. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. And that was Justin Wadsworth, the series champion and the race winner. Will, as we wrap things up for the final time here tonight, any thoughts from you, my friend? Well, I think that's been probably the best season in series history. Obviously, 23 A and B were awesome in their own right, but this season has been a level above. We had an awesome fight for the regular season championship that, as Justin mentioned, came down to just a point between himself and Corey Abbott. But it was awesome to see how he dominated kind of the playoffs and went three in a row for only the third time um, in Arca Series history to put himself on, amongst a pretty elite list of names. Obviously, Chris Wright and Trey Eidson, past champions, and past champions. Uh, Justin Fuller and Trey Eidson, the only ones to ever do a hat trick in the series um, before Justin Wadsworth finished that particular feat tonight, taking the check of flag. So it's been a series of records broken and big highlights. And I think that race just kind of, it it was a fit to be, be, a, be a finale because it kind of culminated everything together into an awesome race and a deserving champion at the end of it. You're exactly right on that. And of course, tonight is the final race that we're going to be doing for the Pit Pass Network Arca Series. Myself and, and yourself, Will, uh, Matthew Weeks and Justin Vandermeerl are going to take it over next season. They're going to do a great job. I know they will. I have the utmost faith in those two and of course chad behind the scenes as well doing what he does with elite dave huckleberry doing what he does with elite racing network he'll do a great job of of helping them when they need it 
I'll, I'll do what I can to help them as well. But uh, it, it's been an honor doing these last three seasons of this series uh, from an idea that we had just to bring in a development series in the start of 2023 to now three seasons, three different champions in Chris Wright, Trey Eidson, and Justin Wadsworth. Many, many winners. I, I think we had 10 different winners this season in just 13 races. So it's absolutely phenomenal what we had it, this season and in the previous two seasons. And we couldn't do it without the drivers. We couldn't to without guys like you will uh shout out to Wyatt Knadel as well he started this journey with me in 2023a up here in the booth uh we've had numerous people jump in throughout Matthew Weeks Austin Sally uh I think Tyler Fody's been up here as well a couple other guys and and we definitely couldn't do without them we couldn't do without all the drivers and of course those that take the time to watch from home uh shout out to pitpassnetwork.com the Pit Pass Network Arca series couldn't have happened without them and their support Check them out. Let them know that Elite sent you. Blue Egg Marketing, Worldwide Technology Raceway. Of course, our camera provider, TrackCams for Gourmet. Check them out, TrackCams22.com. The link's in the bio if you want to get some cool cameras. But I think that's just about going to do it for us here tonight, Will. Thank you for joining me for the last season. It has been one hell of a journey. Can't wait to see what you do in the future, but uh, I think that's just about going to do it for us here tonight from the Worldwide Technology Raceway. We'll see you tomorrow night at Daytona in the Belly Up Sports Cup Series for some action, and I'm the defending race winner. We'll see if I can do it again. We'll see you tomorrow night. Have a good night, everybody.